Okay, so let's get started. I uh, get used to me pressing the record button. So thank you everyone for jumping on um, to our Thursday call. So on Sunday, I had a team building event and one of my coaches suggested that we take it back to basics. And I started to think that um, he was right on target. And the reason I say this is because I know that many of us are struggling this month. So it's important to take it back to basics from time to time. And I also had a, I, um, had a call for my success partner on Monday. And what really pushed me to go ahead and do the, you know, back to basics today was she reached out to me today. She was literally a success club zero when I did her call on Monday night. And she kept texting me today, like success club two, four, six, eight, ten. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, what are you doing? And she said exactly what you told me to do. So I'm going to take you back to the basics that I walked her team uh, through. And I think it was almost like a wake up call because even though I've done this call before for, I did it for Leadwell, I did it for my team, I recorded a video, I've done it for some of um, other coaches' um, team, I feel that, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking you guys are good to go, but it's never, ever, um, you know, like, a re I feel like it's going to be a repeat, but I feel like it's okay if you hear it again, because even though you may have heard it before, something this time whatever sticks might be different. So I'm just going to um, talk to you a little bit about, again, my interview phase and how I go through someone. But also I wanted to, you know, talk a little bit about um, the three vital behaviors. So I'm going to start with that tip only because I think that when we're struggling is because we're missing one of those pieces. We're struggling in one or two or all three of those areas. So if someone's not connecting with us, we need to check ourselves. We need to know, we, we need to check to see if we're doing enough personal development. You know, sometimes, you know, 30 minutes or 15 or 20 minutes might not be cutting it because we might be getting in our own head, it's especially we haven't hit success club, you know, on the 22nd of the month. We start to doubt ourselves and we start to, you know, create these negative, feelings, I mean, these negative thoughts that can affect us when we're speaking to a prospect. So it's important that we check ourselves, that we do more PD when that time um, arises. So basically, you know, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling in the dumps, if you're feeling like, you know, why is it that no one's connecting with me, then do more PD. If you're only doing 15 minutes, double it, double it to half an hour. If you're doing half an hour, then you need to do an hour. And, and that's the bottom line. Um, the other part is, you know, start if you, ha I am guilty of this, you know, I work out and then, and then don't post it all the time on social media because I feel that, um, you know, I don't want to bore people with my workout pictures, but at the end of the day, we are in a health and fitness company. That's what we do. This is our job. And if you guys, um, jumped on the national wake up call on Monday, that's exactly what Fit and Funky talked about. You know, this is a, a, a health and fitness company. And so we need to share that with everyone. We need to share with everyone what has worked for us, what has worked for our challengers, what's working, you know, so we have to share more of that. And if you're not working out, then get back into it. You know, um, a lot of times, you know, we feel that, I don't know, 10 weeks or 60 days is a long program, then start with something short. Do the three-day refresh. Do the 21-day fix, but do it and document and make sure that, you know, social media is keeping you accountable, um, that you're reporting it also to your team, you know, whether it's in your challenge group or whether it is, you know, in a chat or just your coach's team uh, page. Whatever it is, just hold yourself accountable. And if you have, you know, if you haven't been doing a program consistently, then start today because you'll have time tonight to work out. And then the other piece to it is the invitation. I think that we start to um, 
you know, lack in that area or feel a little intimidated or feel like we're a fraud when we're not doing PD and we're not working out. So then you don't feel comfortable enough to invite someone. So make sure that, you know, you're doing personal development, that you're working out and then, you know, the inviting will come naturally because you feel good because you know that it's working for you, that it's worked for you in the past and that it's working and it's worked for other coaches and, you know, challengers as well. So if you're struggling, that just means that you need to put the three vital behaviors on, you know, pen and paper and figure out where you're lacking and step it up because this is our business and no one's going to work it for us and you need to work it, you know, so make sure that, you know, you check all those three areas. And if you've been doing all of those three things and you're still um, struggling, then it might be something in um, the conversation. So reach out, you know, to your upline, maybe take pictures. I know that Audrey had posted um, on Luminous Nation to feel comfortable posting, you know, taking pictures of a conversation that you're having, let's say on private message, and post it so that, you know, we can all help each other and critique where it is that maybe you're not connecting or you're staying too, a little bit too much or a little bit um, not, not enough. So make sure that if you're having those private conversations and you're able to take pictures and share them so that your upline can help you figure out where it is, uh, where the disconnect is. My advice is always to get them on the phone. I feel that when you get someone on the phone, they're able to connect with you better. Um, they're able to hear your enthusiasm. They're able to hear, you know, um, how excited you are about um, Beachbody, how excited you are about coaching, how much you believe in this company, how much you believe and stand by its products. So I think that, you know, that would be my other tip to make sure that you're getting them on the phone so that you are um, able to connect with them better and answer all of their questions. My third tip for you guys is, you know, make sure that um, once you have them on the phone, you're asking the right questions, not any questions, but the right questions. And we'll go over what those questions, you know, will look like um, once I walk you through a sample call. But just make sure that um, you are asking questions about, you know, why is it that they're interested uh, you're asking questions about their nutrition, their fitness, um, and I'll walk you through that in a bit. Um, remember that when you're asking questions, you're listening. So don't ask and then speak over them or cut them off or you're so excited that, you know, you can't hold yourself back and, you know, you're just product vomiting. So make sure that you are not doing that. Make sure that if you're asking questions, you're listening to them because that's your ammunition for later to help you close them because all the information that they're providing you is the same information you're going to um, use at the end to close them because you will use that information to present that challenge group. But that challenge group and that challenge pack is, you know, the solution to all of their needs. And it really is. Um, hang on, puppy. Sorry, guys. All right, so the other thing, um, the other tip is um, don't sell, make sure that you are sharing. And what I mean by that is if you feel that you are um, selling, it probably, you know, is that you are selling. You're coming off too pushy, you know, and then all you're doing is pushing someone away. You know, how many times have you walked through Macy's um, or a department store and and you're going through the perfume section, cologne section, and you have like 30 people, you know, coming to you because they want you to smell or have, have them spray their, their stuff on, on you. And you walk out of there like, seriously, like, I just wanted one thing. So, you know, when people are pushy, you walk the other direction. So don't be that person. Make sure that instead of selling, because that's not what we do here, all we do is share. You're sharing uh, stories you're sharing how this changed your life how it changed someone else's life so collect stories yeah. make sure that you collect stories so that you're able to you know um share so make sure that that you're able to to have more than one story in hand because that person might not connect with you but might connect with someone on your team 
that has you know a similar lifestyle so make sure that you have stories in order to uh, speak to everyone that you will encounter um, another thing is um, make sure that you know you create an emotional response at some point of that conversation because if there's no emotional connection then more likely than not they're not going to go with you because there's nothing there's nothing meaningful in this exchange for them you haven't provided um you know that emotion for them to be like yes i need this so make sure that you're you know you're asking the right questions about how this will change their life and how they really do need this and how beach body will do that for them um hang on puppy all right um so I, my other tip is um be personable guys you know don't this is not an interview i mean it is but it isn't you know what i mean um you are connecting with them this person is going to be a challenger at some point this person is going to be your friend this person is going to be a coach on your team so make sure that you are connecting with them you know in in a very genuine manner so that they don't think like this is just a sale because really it isn't you know we are in a business that we're changing lives so we have to make sure that they feel that on the other hand that they know that you know, you're not, they're not just the sale um and that eventually you know, they're, they're gonna be um i can't mute so i'm not sure who that is so can you guys mute yourself? All right. So basically, you know, just make sure that, you know, you're being genuine, that you're not um, just trying to hit success club. I mean, I know that that is the metric that uh, Beachbody holds us to, but it really is about changing lives. And when you switch that um, to that mentality, everything really does fall into place. So make sure that you are doing it for the right reasons. Um, uh, the other tip that I have is, I think you guys have always heard this and, you know, you're probably going to be like, really, again? But yes, again, make sure that you feel comfortable talking about Shakeology. And I'm not talking about, um, you know, all the uh, details about what Shakeology is made of, but what it has done for you you know, be able, feel comfortable talking about the benefits of it, what it has done for you, what it could do for them, what, you know, what it has done for your challengers, what it has done for your coaches. And like I said, if you collect stories, when people say, you know, things like I have IBS or, you know, um, I have um, uh, high cholesterol, you know, you're able to say, oh, you know, Someone on my team, such and such, had da 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 da, and you're able to pull that story and say, and now, you know, they're feeling wonderfully and blah, 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 blah. So make sure that, you know, you are able to speak about Shakeology without a problem. All right. Um, the other thing that I have to say is the money uh, question. Divert those to the end of the conversation because if you tell them at the very beginning how much it is guess what they're gonna run away they're they're gonna shut you down even if they stay on that call they've already been like nope 140 160 205 dollars i can't do it because you haven't provided them with the value they don't see it yet so if you start to speak about that you know or want to just answer that question because you know um, you kind of want to just please them, then you're going to lose them. So make sure that you direct those to the end. And the way you can do that is by simply saying, you know, um, I need to find out a few things from you first. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions so that I can uh, connect you to the right program. And based on that program, then we can certainly um, determine how much uh, that program is going to cost you. Um, and then I also, and you'll hear this again, I disconnect myself from the price. So I will tell you how I do that um, when I give you my sample script. Uh, but make sure that they are aware that you are not the person who is charging them. I think that's going to help you a lot. Um, the other thing is um, create an urgency. 
So, you know, if you already have dates for your challenge groups, then, you know, basically make sure that you have a, a set um, last day for enrollment kind of thing. So that this way, that is the day before or on that day, you're following up saying, hey, as we spoke on blah, blah, blah day, I told you today was the last day for enrollment. And as we spoke, you know, I told you I would be following up because now there's that urgency that, hey, you know, if I did want to meet my goals, um, today's the last day for me to enroll. And yes, she did tell me. So am I going to sign up, you know, or not? So it is okay for you to say, can I follow up with you? Um, can I follow up with you on such and such day? Because that's the last day for, um, for you to enroll in my group. Um, so make sure that you are creating that urgency. It is important. Um, and then, as I said, you know, make sure that if they didn't commit on that first call, that you are following up, that you are setting up follow-up, you know, calls, and that you are following through and calling them when you scheduled um, that next follow-up. It is important because, um, I'm sure everyone on this call, and if you haven't heard it before, then let me tell you, sometimes it takes more than one time to invite someone to join your challenge group. It can take anywhere from seven to 10 times for them to join. And if you are not following up seven to 10 times, then you're going to lose them to somebody else because someone else will be persistent enough and they will um, catch them. So make sure that you are staying connected make sure that you have a list right because if you're not working from a list then you're not going to be able to follow up because you're going to forget you're speaking to so many people that you'll forget that you had to follow up with this person that and that person because you're busy inviting the next person that will say yes to you so make sure that you are working from a list so that you are able to stay connected with those follow-ups um let's see then um, I always thank everyone for their time, whether they join or not, because you know their time is as valuable as mine. So make sure that you know you uh, are appreciative um, to to them spending half an hour with you or whatever amount of time it was. Some people get chatty, so um, it might be more than half hour. But you know, thank them, thank them for that time. And as I said with you guys earlier, you know, be genuine. Um, this is about us ending the trends of obesity. And, you know, I know that, hang on. sorry, I lost my piece. So just make sure that, you know, um, if you're feeling like you're being pushy and you're being salesy, it's probably because you are, back up and ask more questions so that you can, you know, detach yourself from that. And at the end of the day, you're just trying to change a life. And, and when you hang up that phone call, you know that you have the best intention for that person and they feel the same way. The other thing that I do um, that I recommend that you guys do is that if by being genuine, you know, um, you're going to say, listen, I really want to help you meet that goal. And, you know, you're going to follow up with them. And then if you follow up and they still didn't join, then stay connected. And by staying connected, I mean, you know, if you have a free group, invite them to join, you know, whether that's your five day free eating group and say, hey, you know, I run one of those uh, monthly. Can I um, follow up with you so that you can join that? Or what I do is that I have a running group for motivation and support and so this way because facebook especially if you know they have a lot of friends their feed runs really quickly so whatever you're posting might not they might not even see it you know depending on the time you're posting so however if you have them in a private group that you manage and you're posting the same thing you're posting on facebook in terms of motivation and support and accountability um and you're you know putting in some good recipes in there, you're really giving them, you know, some sort of support. And they're like, wow, she's really helping them without expecting anything in return. And so at the end of the day, when they're ready, guess who they're coming to? To you, because you spent time with them already. So even if they weren't ready this month or 
two months or three months, you know, they will reach out to you. I have girls in there since I started my group and, you know, they're not all jumping at me like, oh yeah, I want to, you know, join, but I've spoken to them. And when they're ready, they come right to me because, you know, I've spent time with them and, and I care and they know that. So they're going to come to you. So make sure that just because they said no, you know, you forget about them. Make sure that you are uh, staying connected somehow, um, somewhere. And then, and then the last tip I have before I walk through my sample um, call is, you know, pray. And, and pray, listen, uh, I've been having calls for a very long time now with um, my prospects. From time to time, someone will tell me, oh, you know, could we do it through here? And then I'll, I'll start typing. And then I have to remind myself that they need to hear my voice. And so um, those people that for whatever reason, they feel a little intimidated by getting on the phone or, you know, legitimately, they just don't know you. And they're like, hmm, I don't want to, I don't want to give her my number. But send them voice notes, connect through voice notes, because at the end of the day, they can still feel your passion through that, um, through that voice note, because they can hear you. So make sure that you are, even if you're having those private messages, that you're not typing that. First of all, to me, it's annoying that the whole typing back and forth, it's long. So I rather get someone on the phone, but if they are not willing, that's fine. Then I'll just send voice notes so that they can hear me. But what I was getting at was that, you know, just be thankful that you were able to speak to that person, whether they allowed you to, you know, get on the phone or not. Um, just thank God for the opportunity, you know, pray, even though, like I was saying, I get, get them on the phone, you know, I still get nervous sometimes. Um, and I just, you know, ask God, you know, please put the right words so that I can speak to this person and whether they join me or not, you know, it's really up to them, their readiness. And I ask God and then, and then also just thank him, whether, whatever the result, whether you got, you know, that person as a challenger, as a coach, or, you know, or, or not, you know, just be thankful that you are in this amazing business and just keep asking God to keep sending you more people your way. And that is my final tip. And then I'll walk through um, the sample call. And I know that this might be repetitive for many of you, but like I said earlier, you might catch something different this time around. So, um, so uh, what I would do is, you know, get them on the phone. Let's say you posted a call to action. People were interested. They emailed you or they private messaged you or you sent um, a direct invite to them and they were receptive to, the, to it. Then now when you schedule that call, I would say schedule it. Schedule that call and say, hey, you know, thank you for your interest. You know, can you, um, I would love to get you on the phone so that I can answer any questions you have. Or, um, you know, I'm sorry, my son is like back and forth here. So, okay, baby, bye-bye. Sorry, guys. So what I do is, um, you know, I ask him, can we get on the phone? so that I can answer any questions you may have. Um, and also to see if this program is a fit for you because maybe it's not, you know? At that point, one, you get them thinking, hmm, what do you mean it's not a fit for me? I can't join your group. All of, all of a sudden it, be, it becomes exclusive and they wanna find out more. And also, you know, you tell them that you're gonna be able to answer all the questions that they have, but also you're gonna get to know their needs you know, because it's not about just your program. It's really about you being able to meet their needs. So then you have that call. When you get them on the phone, what I typically do is, number one, I've been getting a lot of um, people I don't know. Those are the people that I've been connecting with. So when I get on the phone, you know, these are just people that have been following me, whether on Instagram or Facebook. So I don't know them. They know a little bit about me, but I, have no, I don't know anything about them. So make sure that you do your due diligence, go to their pages, find out who they are, you know, do they have kids, you know, um, are they married, do they work, because, you know, people post on social media, some people are private, they might not, so you might not get a lot from their pages, but get something so that you are able to open that conversation up 
you know, with something like, oh my God, your daughter or your son or whatever is so adorable. Or I saw that you guys just came back from vacation. <clears throat> You're able to connect so that the conversation is not awkward. And then when you make it about them, who doesn't like to talk about themselves, right? So people start to open up. They start to just, you know, feel more comfortable. The idea is to get them comfortable at first so that they're not uptight. <clears throat> and then the majority of the time, they will bring up the health and fitness. Hey, you look amazing. What is it that you do again? You know, how did you get your body like that after having a kid? And boom, you get right into it. Sometimes, no. <clears throat> but what I do like to ask, um, once I've gotten them comfortable is I like to ask things like, tell me, tell me what interests you about my invitation or tell me what, um, you know, caught your attention about my, uh, post so that this way I know why it is that they reached out to me or they said, yes, you know, tell me a little bit more. So once, once I do that, <clears throat> they're able to tell me a little bit. People sometimes will tell you um, just a tad. They might say, I want to lose 10 pounds, 15, 20, 30, whatever. Um, but sometimes they might not. They might leave it at that. Some people might open up and say more um, than you expected, which is wonderful because now you don't have to pull. You might have to pull teeth with some people and that's fine. You know, not everybody's going to be comfortable right away talking to you. So once you found out what it is that they want, then you start to ask them questions about, um, you know, what it is that they're doing to meet that goal. So ask questions like, so tell me, you know, you tell me you want to lose 15, 20 pounds. Uh, what are you currently doing to meet that goal? Uh, you know, are you going to the gym? Are you taking any classes? You know, are you running? Are you walking? What are you doing? Talk to me about, you know, your activity level. And then they'll share with you whether they're going to the gym, whether they're not going to the gym, whether they're taking Zumba classes, whether they are kickboxing, taking kickboxing class, whatever it is, they'll let you know. And then take it a little further and ask, ask them, you know, so how many times a week are you doing this? Um, how long is it? You know, and if they tell you, oh, you know, sometimes I only make it two to three times. Those are the things that you need to be, you know, be paying attention to. And at first, if you can't retain all of this information, I suggest that you take a notepad and a pen and write these important things down that you're going to be able to use them at the end. So, you know, make sure that you're asking, so how much is it that you're paying at the gym? You know, um, sometimes people are in, I think, what is it called? Planet Hollywood. I think that one, I, is that what it's called? Um, but I think that, no, um, whatever it's called, but it's like $10 a month. But you know, sometimes people are in, in other, the New York uh, sports club, that one is an expensive gym. So, you know, and then they might not even be going, they might be going once a week, if that, and then ask them, why is it that you're not going to the gym? Why can't you make it out there? And they might tell you, I'm exhausted after work, or I don't have time, you know, I have to come home and you know, cook and do homework with my kids. And I just don't find the time for myself. Boom. You have the answer to that because they can work out at home. Right. And they don't need to be at the gym for an hour or two, because that's the, that's the perception that many of us had before we got with Beachbody that you had to be at the gym. I know that was my perception. I used to be at the gym for an hour and a half. I don't know what in the world I was doing. I used to do the same routine every single time I went. And I'm pretty sure I wasn't doing anything for myself. But um, that's a lot of the same issues that a lot of people are confronting. So you have to be able to ask those questions so that you can, you know, obtain the, the information. Um, so just make sure that you are asking a ton of questions about their fitness um, and what it is that they're doing and why is it that they aren't um, sticking to it? Or why is it that they start and they stop? Is it because they're lacking motivation? Is it because they're lacking support? And you have the answer to that as well in your challenge group. Then you will move into um, nutrition. I spent a little time here because 80% of their results is based on nutrition. So if they're eating, you know, um, like they don't care about themselves, then that's exactly, you know, why they aren't losing weight. Even if they're spending two, three hours at the gym, you know, they're leaving the gym and I don't know, going downstairs and getting 
pizza or a burger, then they're not going to get the results that they want. So make sure that you're asking questions like, walk me through a usual day, you know, um, in, in, in your life based on your nutrition and then have them tell you what it is that they're eating for breakfast, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Are they having snack? How much water are they drinking? And I'm sure that throughout this whole conversation, they would have told you whether they work or not, because they probably would have said, I am exhausted from work, blah, blah, blah. So then you can say, listen, are you bringing your breakfast and lunch to work or are you purchasing it? And then if they tell you that the majority of the people are going to tell you that they're purchasing, and then you can ask them, how much are you spending when you purchase this? And I connect with everyone who tells me that because I am guilty of that. I used to spend $20 in the city for breakfast and lunch every single day. I used to put, I used to put $100 aside um, a week and I was spending $400 a month. It's insane. And so a lot of people do it, but they're not conscious of it. They just know they got to eat. So they spend it. But if you bring it up to their attention later, you know, they're going to be like, holy crap. So what I do is I find out, they tell me, yes, I spend about $10, you know, a day. And then I say, so is that about $50? And I ask them so that they can, you know, confirm. So I said, you know, is it fair enough to say that you're spending $50 a day? And they say, yes. So that is, you know, $200 a month. They're like, oh my God. And many people will tell you, oh my goodness. You know, they didn't really realize that. And Sometimes they're going out for coffee runs. They're going to Starbucks with their coworkers because, you know, it's three o'clock. You know, that three o'clock is like, I need something. And, and they might not, they just want to, even though they have coffee in the office, they just want to go outside and they will go to Starbucks. They will go to Dunkin' Donuts and they're spending three to like six bucks right there alone. So now you have that ammunition for money. All right. Um, and, and then find out, you know, what it is that they're eating so that you are able to tell them that, you know, they are not eating correctly, that you'll be able to help them with that as well. Once you have gathered all of that beautiful information that you will use to your advantage later, then you can move on to telling them about the group. So once I, I'm done with that, um, you know, I say, so, you know, let me, let me walk you through uh, what my uh, accountability group looks like. And then, you know, I can answer any questions you may have. And then I walk them through, you know, the challenge, uh, the challenge pack, basically, and the challenge group. Um, I don't say challenge pack to them, by the way. I tell them, um, so you will, in my group, you will receive a fitness program that you will follow from home. Based on your needs and based on everything you've told me, I am going to recommend um, a 21 day program. And the, and then I tell them why, you know, if this is a person who starts something and gives up after two weeks or after six weeks or whatever, you know, why would you recommend a 10 week program? Right. They're, because they just need to get themselves into something, complete it so that they can feel accomplished and then they can move on to something longer. So then I walk them through, you know, um, this is an easy program. It's only half an hour. You told me that you come home exhausted. You don't have time. You don't go to the gym because of that. And this is going to save you time. You're going to come home. You're going to, you know, cook, do uh, homework with your kids, put them to bed, and then half an hour for yourself. You work out, you're in, you're out, you, you bathe, and boom, you're, ho you're, you're done by 9 p.m. Isn't that amazing? And then I tell them how easy it is because, you know, they're going to have a, uh, a calendar that they can follow. And this way, there's no guesswork. Then I walk into nutrition and I tell them that they will receive a, a nutrition plan, an easy to follow nutrition plan that will help them, um, you know, make sure that they stay accountable to their food. And I reiterate the importance of nutrition, that it is 80% of their results. And that if they are not showing up in the kitchen, they will not have results. I also tell them if I am recommending the 21 day fix and honestly, guys, the majority of the people I recommend the 21 day fix because a lot of people are struggling with nutrition. A lot of people don't know how to eat. And that is the program to teach them how to do that. Um, so I start them off there 
But remember, you know, if it's someone that loves cardio and you know that you're going to, you know, just keep them entertained and, 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 and they're going to focus with that, then T25 is the way to go. You know, someone who wants to build muscles and someone that wants to gain weight, you know, I would say body beast. So you have to pay attention to their needs so that you're able to recommend the right program. But I do recommend the 21 day a lot because of the fact that a lot of people who come to me struggle with nutrition. So I tell them how they're going to get the uh, containers so that they can, um, you know, it can help them with portion control. And then I also talk about Shakeology. This is my opportunity to tell them how amazing it is, you know, how yummy it is and how, you know, it's helped me, how, you know, how it's helped other people. So depending on the person, you're going to use stories and you're going to tell them, you know, th their same experiences, how it worked on someone else and how it's helped them, you know, um, basically overcome whatever it is that they need to overcome and spend a little time there so that you're able to um, make them understand that nutrition is important. You know, hone in on the fact that like 95% of the population is nutrient deficient. And make sure that they understand that this shake is not a protein shake. Make sure they understand that this is not just for weight loss because a lot of people think that once they, let's say someone says, I need 10 pounds, you know, I want to lose 10 pounds. Once they've lost them, they're like, well, what do I need Shakeology for? Well, if you didn't explain to them and in your challenge group, you're not promoting the fact that Shakeology is amazing and it's not only for weight loss, then how are they going to know that? So you have to make sure that they're aware that this is not just for weight loss, that there's people drinking it that don't need to lose any weight. You know, I drink it and I need to gain weight at this point. So they have to understand that it's for the nutrition aspect of it, that they're drinking it for the vitamins, the minerals, you know, for all the benefits that it's going to provide. And then you're going to tell them about your challenge groups and that's, that's where you're going to support them. That's where you're going to give them motivation, inspiration, and that they're going to hold themselves accountable in there, not only to themselves and to you, but to other, you know, ladies that are going, or gentlemen, that are going through um, the program, you know, together. So, and you can tell them, you know, not every day you're going to be motivated to put on your sneakers and work out. But when you see your, you know, your teammates putting on their sneakers and, and you see their pictures, their sweaty pictures, then you're going to want to do that because you're going to feel bad because it's only 30 minutes. And then you sum all of that up. Um, what I do is I make sure to tell them that they get me as a coach. They make, they, you know, I want them to make sure that they know that they're going to have me from the very moment they enroll to whenever they decide that they are, you know, they reach their results or that they no longer want to continue, um, that they can use me as little or as much as they want, because my goal is for them to reach their goal. And I always tell them, you know, because it's true. If, if someone doesn't obtain the results that they signed up for, I feel like I failed them. And at the end of the day, our job is exactly that to help people get results. And if you're not doing that, then we're failing them as their coaches. So we have to make sure that we are there a hundred percent of the time when they need us. Um, and obviously in the group, I make sure to tell them that the group is exactly for that. If they have questions, um, to post them in there and that in there, I respond to them because a lot of people may have the same question and a lot of people may benefit from the answer. So, sorry, he fell. So, um, is okay? He fell, sorry. Hang on. Sorry, guys. Um, so, babe, can you can you take him to the room? Is he okay? So, um, so that's how I finish off that whole thing, and then I'm oh, sorry.
sorry about that guys um so then i um right from there i um ask them if they have any questions and yes they do the majority of the time you know that they, they might have questions about the group not not that often if you are very thorough but um they do have the question the money question and sometimes i've had people say no i don't have any questions i'm like yeah you do so um so you walk them through the 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 money question right and you tell them that's when you disconnect yourself from the money because you are not charging anyone they are not paying you it's beach body who is pay, um charging them so i tell them you know and i reiterate again what the program comes with but i tell them you know i don't have anything in my home to sell you the only things i have in my home are the things that i use for my personal use and then i make sure to tell them i will send you a link and the reason i'm sending you this link is because we need to make sure that i am assigned as your coach however when it comes to um, enrolling and it comes to shipping and billing that is all handled by the company make sure to reiterate that and then i tell them exactly what the challenge pack brings again so you know some people will forget so i tell them you're going to get a full fitness program a full nutrition plan you're going to get um a uh, the containers if you are offering the 21 day fix um and a 30 day supply of shakeology and then I say, if they told me that they are using $200 a month, I say, and this is only going to cost you $140 and I'm just putting $60 back in your pocket. I'm saving you money. Or people who are spending $300, then it's more money, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how I end that. And then I say, um, my next group starts on such and such date. And obviously they know that from your message or your post, but I reiterate it, my, you know, my next group starts on, for example, for me, November 2nd, and then uh, looking at the calendar, the last day for enrollment for that group would be um, either the 24th or the 25th, which is that Sunday, because there's time, you know, for transit, for delivery. So I tell them the reason that the last day to enroll is because, you know, Beachbody has to ship you your order and therefore you know you have to wait for it and i tell them about the cleanse you can start the cleanse on friday so we make we want to make sure that you have your order by thursday so that i can walk you through what the cleanse looks like and i also reiterate how much weight they can lose they can lose x y and z and with the cleanse and i o i always use my numbers you know in terms of you know the average in my group so use whatever average you have. And if you don't, then you can say, you know, I've, um, I've seen just from your, from your um, experience, whatever you lost on the cleanse or whatever you lost in the 21 day fix or ask someone what they've lost. So I typically say, you know, um, you can lose anywhere from three to seven pounds in uh, doing the three day cleanse or, and you can lose anywhere from seven to 15 pounds uh, in the 21 day fix. So that's what I do. And then I ask them, um, I basically assume the cell and I say, um, all I need from you to send you the link is your email address, your first and last name and the flavor of Shakeology. Um, typically I recommend people who are, I ask them, I say, you know, are you lactose intolerant? If they are, I recommend the vegan flavors. If not, then I tell them all about the different flavors. And then, and then if they're ready, they're going to say, here is my information. I tell them, send it to me in a text or send it to me in a private message. They send it to me right away. I send them the link, boom, they enroll. If they don't, if they're not ready or they're like, all right, let me think about it. Or, okay, let me talk to my husband. Or I don't think I have the money yet. I'll, you know, I get, paid, I, I get paid Friday. I'm sure you guys have heard that many times. Then at that point, make sure you schedule the follow-up, right? Um, but before you let them go, make sure you've answered all the questions, you know? Say, um, is there any questions that I can answer? Do you have any hesitations? Are you looking forward to joining my group? Um, and then, you know, you let them answer. And then if you need to schedule, that's fine. You, you, you schedule a follow-up. And then what I do is I tell them that I'm gonna send them more information 
So I sent them the uh, a video on Shakeology, the short one. Um, but I do like the Tony Horton one. That's very informative and funny. And then, um, and then I also send them whatever program I'm um, ref uh, recommending. I'm, I send them that program as well. And then once I've um, you know sent them that on the phone uh, via text message or via uh, private message, then uh, I tell them that I will follow up with them as schedule. So then you get off the phone and you thank them, as I said, you know, and you tell them you'll follow up with them and then do follow up. Make sure that you call them when you said you were going to call them and say, hey, you know, as schedule, I'm calling you, just wanted to, um, you know, follow up with you. Do you have any further questions about the videos I sent you? And if not, then let's get you enrolled. You know, let's get you enrolled for my group. And that's basically all I have, guys. If you have any questions, please unmute yourselves and, um, and ask away. No? Good. <laughs> so everyone's going to go and hit Success Club? <laughs> hey, sorry, Gabby, I do have one question. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, cool. This is Kristen. Hi, Kristen. Hi. So what if somebody like really won't get on the phone, then do you just kind of take that as you're not ready? So like will you have a conversation in private message? And they want just to do PM? Yeah. I've had people like that. They're, they're either um, introverts or they just don't, because they don't know you, they feel uncomfortable giving you your, their number. Uh -huh. So you can suggest either calling them through the Facebook um, app because there's like a phone. Um, okay. I actually have one of my coaches um, who is actually, I think, on this call, who didn't feel comfortable giving me her number at first. And that was fine because, you know, she didn't know me. Um, so she didn't feel comfortable giving me her number for me to have her personal information. And then we spoke through the um, icon, you know, that phone thing feature. And mm -hmm. if they don't, if they still don't want to talk to you through that, make sure that... Um, Honestly, I've seen that whenever I abide by that request and I just do the uh, private messages, they don't join because they can't hear my excitement. You know, even if I'm giving them everything I just walked through, they just don't feel it, you know? And so what I started doing is sending voice notes so that they can hear me and they can, you know, um, understand that I'm passionate about this and that they are going to get results and that, you know, and that I really want them to get results, but they can't hear that through a text or they can't hear that through a private message. So I would say if they're like, no, they're not going to get on the phone with you for whatever reason, that's fine. But send them, send them voice notes so that they can hear you. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Anyone else? Nope. We love you, Gabby. Who said that? JLo. <laughs> love you too, girl. <laughs> All right, so I guess everyone is. I have a question. Uh, yes. Sorry. Um, so let's just say you know you go through everything. Um, you send them the. Let's just say they're not ready to join just yet. You send them the, the videos, etc. You follow up. You mentioned the seven to ten times that you would need to follow up with that person. So let's just say you think you've been on the phone with them. Do you continue the the hard and fast rule of seven to ten times of following up with them? And if so, how often do you follow up? So typically the first time around, like you follow, first of all, there's some people that will say yes, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm so ready, send me the link, you send the link, and then they never right. go through with it. Mm -hmm. so I do a three follow up with them. So I do, you know, if they didn't complete the day they said, then the next day I'm following up uh, by saying, hey, I saw that you started the enrollment. Um, but didn't complete it. Uh, just wanted to remind you, A, that the last day to join my group is such and such. And are there any questions that I can answer for you? Because maybe they are, you know, they're, they just have questions and they're just, um, I don't know, maybe embarrassed to ask you because you went through everything. I don't know, whatever. So I follow up that time. If they still don't respond to me, I follow up the next day and I say, Hey, I sent you, you know, a, a message yesterday. Just wanted to remind you that such and such day is the last day to join my group. 
And I know that you were very motivated to lose your 20 pounds. Um, and then I throw back their, um, the reason why they reached out to me, the reason why they told me they wanted to lose weight. If I still don't get any response, I follow up the third day and I let them know that, hey, it appears that you, and I call them out, it appears that you're not ready to lose the 20 pounds you told me, and that's fine. I will be here to work with you whenever you are ready. Because I want to make sure that they know that, hey, we spoke, you were really excited, but you really weren't ready, and that's okay. You want to make sure that they're aware that, you know, that you're going to still work with them whenever they are ready. So, but I also want them to know that, you know, I know you're ignoring me. So, but that's fine. Now, the other people who um, just weren't ready, then I follow up with them basically every month because I let them know when my next challenge group is. And also, especially those people, let's say you spoke to about a certain program that is on sale, then you want to go back to them and say, hey, you know, I was thinking about you because I know that you were really interested in the 21 day fix and it's on sale this month. And I figure, you know, um, I hit you up to see if you're ready to join my next group, which starts on such and such date. However, you still want to follow up monthly with those people because the, the month that you don't follow up, someone comes and scoops them. So um, you want to make sure that you're following up and, you know, and it might take more than a year. Sometimes people will come around like, you know, the next, like I've had people that I invited when I first started who are just starting to come around, you know what I mean? So they come around, but you got to be consistent too, because if you drop the ball, then they're not gonna, and if not only drop the ball and following up, but if you're not showing yourself in, you know, in social media and you're not showing that you're having results and that, you know, this is working for you, that you're not showcasing yourself, then they're not going to go with you. All right. Thank you. Did I answer all your questions? Yes, cool. Anyone else? Everyone's ready to hit Success Club tomorrow? Today? Tonight? Ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> Let's do this. So, I guess everyone's ready. I'm excited. I'm excited to see tomorrow that I'll be announcing a bunch of Success Club earners, and so will Audrey. Is Audrey still on the call? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, but thank you guys for jumping on tonight. Um, if you guys think of any other questions, feel free to post them on the Luminous Nation page and uh, I'll be happy to answer them. All right? Cool. Have a great night, everyone.